All right, guys, such a back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. And with Sentinel successfully qualifying for the VCT main event last week, the question has been raised, what exactly is going on with Sinatra? With Kanpeki taking Zoms' place on the team, some were wondering, could Sinatra step into that team at some point or another? He's potentially still undergoing some training right now from the Riot side. Will he get a spot anytime soon? He certainly reckons he's easily good enough to compete with the pros once again. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. We to the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. Getting close to three quarters of the way to 20k from 10k. Love to see it. Not going to talk about the whole Dazna stuff. If you guys want to get into that and look into it, feel free to do so. But I thought this is rather funny from Seven, honestly, on the timeline right here. I just wanted to mention this as well. Some further follow up to the T1 situation. If you guys missed it yesterday, Zeta leaving Cloud9 to join T1. Like, um, there's all sorts of talk about this, the implications of this for what happens uh, with these organizations going forward into future seasons. Like, um, of course, well, next year with the kind of franchise era, potentially starting to come into effect. Seal says the following, he's still going to be the IGL for this team. It does indeed seem. And I'm, um, you know, just kind of joking about the help sewers stuff as well here in the replies. And Seal says the following as well after the whole like help sewers drama for a couple of months ago. Now he says, I can't wait to get to work with Autumn, the coach that's coming over from Cloud9. He has promised me that it will allow me to have all the fun in the world, putting me on Neo, Yoru, Jet, and Rays. I will be unleashed. I won't even need help in the sewers. So I okay, get, yeah, maybe on split, it's going to be okay from now on for those guys. But uh, yeah, obviously it's going to take quite some time until we see these guys play tournaments or even know what their roster is going to be, right? Because they might make some serious changes to their team. And do they necessarily want to look in a new team or new set of players now? Just because after Champions or after Masters, there could be other changes that go down, right? And other teams that they can potentially pick players up from other teams and try and form a really solid squad going into next season and, you know, play some of the kind of off-season tournaments, the third-party organized tournaments, which seem to be going down. So many questions on that front. And speaking of that, of course, some questions here from Bodog on exactly what's going to be going on with the franchising era going forwards. Because as he describes, in Europe and North America, the number announced franchising has really hurt the number of organizations who want to enter the scene since they know they'll have no chance to actually get into the franchising which I guess makes sense right if you're like a smaller organization you're not really a big dog like um, it makes sense okay let's just not enter here because we're not going to be able to get into franchising so it does hurt that element of things but it's um you know maybe it's a positive for the scene in general who knows and we're just saying actually that APAC to Asia Pacific they're seeing an awful lot more interest right so it is rather interesting because there's also going to be we understand a European an American and, um, and also like a, effectively an Asian region with a franchise partners in, in the league but it seemingly a lot of organizations are very much looking at getting into that region even some tier one organizations in Europe are looking at APAC offers right now so that region seems to be blowing up despite North America arguably still being the golden goose of Valorant now this actually I thought was rather interesting so as he describes Riot comes to you asking to help scout 16 esports teams to join the American League of Valorant so this apparently is maybe the going rumor that uh, the franchising that we're going to have next season is going to be a 16 team league which I guess makes sense in the, all the different regions now six teams might well need to be from South America. So that's kind of what Bodork is theorizing here. Whether that's the reality, who knows? But it sounds rather plausible, right? In the Americas League that's going to happen next time, the American League, 10 teams, North American teams, six South American teams, that might be, you know, what they decide to do. Now he's kind of wondering here what these organizations could be. MIBR, Loud, Fury, Crew Esports, like those are all kind of, you know, nailed on, I think. NRP as well. Then we've got, okay, Fusion, Leviathan, what do you want to do there? So I think relatively this is a pretty good list. Now, of course, you've then got to decide if this is the case, which 10 organizations from North America get involved. I think to me, the guards, 100 Thieves, Optic Sentinels, like um, these, honestly, a lot of these you feel like have to be there, right? Optic is certainly going to get there after their Masters performance. I think the 100 Thieves will certainly get there as well, given their kind of tenure and, um, you know, what they've kind of shown and wanting to support. The Sentinels, of course, are the biggest organization. Guards have an awful lot of money and resources, and they've done great things with them, a very, relatively young roster and supporting the future of Valorant in a way, getting some of these guys on contract. So I think these four are nailed on. Cloud9, you'd imagine it's going to be there. NRG as well, you'd think would be in it. And then the rest of the guys, I think FaZe will be there as well, just the, the kind of name value. LG, of course, they also have a lot, awful lot of resources. And T1, you'd think they'd be there as well. So it's really tough to call because, of course, a missing name here is TSM, right? You'd think that TSM, they certainly want to get involved. They made it clear actually just a few days ago they are trying to get a partnership for the, the America's League next season. But out of these 10 teams, Bodog's certainly not including them. So the reality is at least a few big name organizations are going to have to miss out here, right? Because we've seen like Evil Geniuses, they're not here either. So like, these teams definitely have to fight tooth or nail, I think. Some of these organizations, some of them should be nailed on, but some of them will have to fight tooth and nail to actually get a spot next season if this is the way they decide to do it, which seems like a plausible option, to be honest. Wanted to mention Chamber actually just real quick here, because there's been some talk from a lot of different Valorant players about the fact that he is effectively the most crutch agent in the game right now. Of course, had some changes recently, not too many changes, or really the only changes that went downward to here is the amount of traps he has, but at the actual performance of Chamber on the Operator and the Hit Hunter and stuff like this hasn't really changed. You might just have to pair him with other agents that actually give you more information, because Chamber doesn't really do 
that side of his gameplay anymore, despite effectively being a Sentinel. As Leaf says, Chamber is the new crutch agent fellas. And this kind of leads into the Sentinels discussion, just because a few days ago, it was a Tens that said, okay, then actually he might want to use the Chamber now instead of the Jet. Just because Jet has vastly decreased in popularity compared to Chamber over these last few weeks. This I thought was quite remarkable. These are the stats here over at VLR.gg. You guys ask me what this website is. It's VLR.gg. And this is the stage two challenges here in North America, just filtered by the first week of group stage matches. And these are the pick rates for the agents. Pretty much everything is 50% or below. Raise is even up here now. Jet is down at 31% as is Sova. Of course, look, it depends to a degree on what maps are being played. On Fracture, for example, you see an awful lot of Breach and, and Raise and Brimstone, this type of stuff. And of course, Fracture has been played an awful lot the first week. So this will even out and change over time. But out of all the agents, the only one that has been picked on every single map is none other than Chamber, right? It's been picked on every single map that has been played. Only occasionally not picked on Bind or Breeze. And you can see like every team that's played so far has pretty much picked him. And obviously it's a small sample size and this will kind of change and even out a little bit over time. But Chamber right now is an 85% pick rate, which I wouldn't expect to change that much because seemingly like there's loads of players who are effectively now just Chamber mains and use him every single map. So like um, yeah, I do wonder what a kind of Riot are going to think about this because we saw, we saw Jit really for quite a long time on similar numbers and now it's effectively swapped the other way around. So maybe they will theorize the nerf they brought in. He hasn't really done all that much, to, I guess, to change his popularity away. But let's talk about the Sentinel stuff then. So as Ten says not too long ago, Chamber is probably too strong right now. Like uh, he's, uh, the slow on his operator, his fast fire rate operator as well is already maybe a little too much to make Chamber a bit too good. And Ten said a few days ago, he really likes Chamber. He might actually want to use it. And despite it being a slightly slower, more passive agent, that might be the key to taking, well, Ten and Sentinels back to a new level. Because when Ten is on the raise, it, uh, it doesn't look anywhere near as good as when he's on the jet. There's no doubt about that one. And maybe Chamber is the agent that kind of suits Tens rather nicely, at least if he can kind of adapt to that role. Now, the other big story around Sentinels in early April sometime was around Sinatra, right? Would he be returning to competitive play? He said right here on the 12th of April, a, a year after I was forced to step away, I'm looking to return to competitive and we'll be starting tryouts this week. And there was rumors that he was trying out with Sentinels. He was trying out in that roster, I believe, in place of Zomas briefly. And um, people thought he was actually going to be able to return to the starting team on Sentinels, which uh, potentially was actually on the cards. Now, it turns out a few days later, like he kind of, as he describes, clarifies the situation. But he tweets out this email, which I thought was quite surprising. He actually exposed this. He exposed himself in a way that, um, you know, they had said to him, that, um, you know, you've been fully cooperating and therefore we don't need you to do this training because you probably already know all the information that's covered in this kind of, uh, you know, cooperating with investigations training or whatever Riot wanted to do. The thing is, people saw this and were like, hang on a second there, Riot have just basically let this guy go scot-free and he doesn't even have to do any, like, training or whatever on the situation, you know, whatever exactly they want him to do. So the rumour has it, therefore, they come out after the fact and say, okay, actually, yeah, that we, we realise that it was actually necessary for him to do this training. Therefore, he will have to undergo this professional conduct training as they describe it as. So we understand that probably that's what Sinatra has been doing or is currently going through. And once he's completed this training, he will be once again allowed to come back to competing. The problem is that he's kind of missed the window for the key roster changes that might well go down ahead of, of course, Masters and Champions beyond that. So it might well take him to next season to actually get a good opportunity here once again. But as Sinatra says in this clip, people ask him, okay, do you really think you're going to be able to be good enough after all this time off competing to compete with the best in the world? And in North America, and um, you know, he reckons that's no, going to be no problem at all on that front. I think you can still keep up with the current pro teams since you've been out pro scene for so long, such as Ops. Right, don't even ask. That is legit disrespectful and better than everybody in the NA combined. Diamond, that's it, Prime. So, of course, part of the question is also like, okay, which organization wants to give him a go? Like, do organizations want to take this kind of PR risk? We saw the 100 Thieves and Nature said that, like, you know, he's not going to go anywhere near Sinatra effectively for reasons that you can probably understand from a business perspective. But of course, that Sentinels have supported him as a content creator. So the question was there, will they support him as a player instead? Zombs was traded out here for Kanpeki, of course. And some people wonder whether Kanpeki is kind of a placeholder for Sinatra's place in the team and they could change their own roles or make something work, who knows? And maybe that's a possibility, right, in the long haul. But, um, you know, if Sinatra, we don't really know when he's going to have done with his training or whatever. Like, let's say he's done in a few weeks' time and, um, and Sentinels underperform. Like, you know, do they make a change? Do they bring Sinatra in for Kanpeki going into the last chance qualifier, like Masters, Champions, whatever? It is maybe a possibility. But very much been treated to your perspective in the comment section below. Sinatra seems very confident that he can step back in. No problem at all. And absolutely dominate the competition, which, you know, it's good to have the confidence in yourself, of course. But it's kind of strange how long this delay has kind of gone on for and why we haven't really heard any updates on this kind of training front that Sinatra is meant to be going through right now. 
now and when he might be able to compete again or when he's kind of free to go and compete again. So really interesting stuff, I thought. Speaking of roster changes and kind of information along those lines, thought this is rather interesting that was spotted here between the phase guys and, of course, while well, scrimming 100 Thieves. We can see 100 Thieves, Sean Gares, the coach of the team, Will, Star, Asno, and Derek on the team. We've also got, though, Baby Bay, Superman, Shanks, and JDM. So JDM, the coach for phase, Rise Shanks, or former Rise Shanks, now, of course, on effectively the bench for the phase guys so that they had enough players on their team from Rise to get the bye to the round of 32 of the qualifiers, which, of course, they ended up qualifying through the first time of asking and getting all the way through. So what not sure what's going on here because Shanks, of course, is currently on the bench. Now, um, you know, whether he's stepped in, he's subbed in for a scrim or whether someone else is on his account or whatever, like uh, seemingly he's stepping in. So like, honestly, I wouldn't put anything past uh, Valorant teams right now for making crazy moves as we saw yesterday with Cloud9. But probably this is just a one-off situation. This is also just to mention it from Ethan as we were talking about agents earlier on and Chamber and his situation. Rito, please fix the KO knife bug. Like I haven't experienced this personally, but as he describes, shows a different number for me, my teammates under minimap and after the round every single time. So that's obviously a bit of a frustration. Hopefully I can get on top of this one soon. And just to mention this to close out from Willminder, some of the best performances from the first week of the NA group stage. I'm not sure these were absolutely like all of the best performances, just because I think like 10 statistically was probably deserving to be on here. I think there was some drama in the replies actually about this, but you can see that the top performances, B-Dog and Yay, were both of course with the chamber in hands. But Asana, Vanity and Ethan were also fine. Good to see a kind of members represented here from all across the board. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit on the like button. Tell us the YouTube gods. This is a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive Valorant community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time.